I am going to show today a quick demo of Process Pulse 2, just some of the high level features, how to set up a configuration so that you can monitor your process. So the first thing we have to do is log in and you can set different levels for your uh, people who are logging into this account. Um, of course, there's administrator level, there's also developer who can build models, uh, create configurations, um, and then you also have an operator level, and operators can only run configurations that are already set up in your system. So it's pretty straightforward. You just, um, I like to say it's easy as one, two, three. So the first step is to create your data sources. So this is where you're going to import your data from. Uh, this is your raw data. As you see, I have a couple of setups already in here, and there's different types of data that we can bring in. If you wanted to come in here and you have one that you've already made, you can always edit it and change some of the settings if you need to do that. So what we're going to do is add new data source. I'm just going to give it a name. So process pulse to demo. Then we select our type of data. We see we have all types of data. ASCII, that's going to be your CSV, your text files. We have a number of different proprietary spectroscopy formats. Um, PI, TCB, IP, all kinds of fun things in here that you can use. I'm just going to stick with the ASCII for now. <clears throat> and I just press next. Here I have all of my options. When you use ASCII, you're actually looking at a watch folder. So I'm going to browse to where I am going to save my files. So demo data, I'm going to do input Robin. So this is where Process Pulse is gonna look for new files coming in. And I just need to go up one. And what we need to do is give it an example file. This is just so you can check and make sure that it, all of your settings are done correctly. I press next. And this is my preview. So this is some spectroscopic data. It's Raman data. And it looks like what I'm expecting. So I can go ahead and say finish. And now I have a new data source. The second step is going to be importing your models. This is a, a nuisance alarm just to remind you that you're moving away from your data source module. So when we're in here, you can see I have a number of models in here. I have some that are enabled, some are disabled. So if something goes out of service, but you want to keep it in the system, you can disable it rather than delete it, which is handy. So I'm going to press this button, Upload, and I'm going to browse to where my model file is. So I'm going to do this model, Open, and I choose which model I want. In this case, I only have one model in this file. If you had more than one available model in that Unscrambler file, you would see multiple options. I also want to give this a name, process plus to demo. And if I had any comments on it, you can put that here. If you want to give it a specific project name, you can do that, project and products. Um, you can add those here. I'm just going to leave them blank for now. This is where if you have more than one user, uh, different operators, and you only want certain people to use certain models, you can fill them in here uh, to allow them different rights, whether they can read it and edit it and disable it rather than just use it. And we just hit next. And this is just an overview summary to make sure that you have all the settings the way that you want them. And we go finish. Now, once you have a model in here, um, you can always download that model using one of these buttons, or I can open it directly in Unscrambler if the Unscrambler is available on the computer that you have Process Pulse installed on. If I push this button, 
it pops open on Scrambler with this particular model. And you can go and check what your settings are here. So this is your model, and you get all the graphics that you generally expect from the Unscrambler. You also have the raw data, so you can look at your original spectra in that sheet, concentrations, etc. So I'm just going to close that. No, I don't want to save any changes. And so the third step now is configuration. Now we want to do is create a new configuration. I'm going to make two real quick just so you can see a couple of options. The first thing I need to do is hit edit here so that I can make a new name. So process pulse 2 demo spectra. Say OK. It automatically assigns the revision. And I'm going to do no model here just so that it's just purely showing the data as it's coming in. Hit next. Again, we have some options. I find my data source. My drop down is any data source I have in here. I want to use my Process Pulse 2 demo. Next. Um, this is if you want to do any transformations that were already associated with the model. Uh, if there's a drop down box and you have different ones that you can use like baseline, normalize, smoothing, uh, very simple transforms. I'm not going to apply any and say next. I can create new columns as well based on formulas um, for my variables that are in my from my data source, uh, and there are a number of different functions. If it wants to cooperate with me, here we go. So you can build a an equation um, with the different variables that are in that data source. I'm not going to do anything with that now and click next. I want to specify what kind of data is. It defaults to process data, but I know that this is spectroscopic data, so I want to change it to spectral data. Um, it makes a little bit of difference of how it saves things and displays things. I'm going to say next. There's other output formats if you want to export things in OPC or TCP IP, ASCII, um, and I believe this is Process Pulse as well. Um, I'm just going to leave that blank for now because it will store within Process Pulse as well. Next, I'm going to run normal. Uh, you can also have an external trigger if you're connected with a TCP IP directly to an instrument. That would be that your instrument is causing the trigger to uh, run the model. I'm just going to say next. In normal, it just waits for new data to show up in that um, watch folder. You can set alarms if you want to as well. Next, again, you can assign users that have access to read and write um, or disable the models or configurations. This is just your general overview. Again, this was no model. And I can check them all. Everything looks good. So I'm going to do finish. I'm going to do one more. So I want to do edit process pulse to demo prediction. Say OK. And I'm going to do a prediction model. Hit next. <clears throat> now I get a couple more options. So now I can go into my models that are in my that are available. And I'm going to choose Process Pulse 2 demo. It gives me a summary so I can make sure that is the one that I want to use. Next, 
I choose my data source again. And from here on out, everything is similar, um, except when we do a prediction, we want to say, what do we want to view when it comes out? So I have my Y predictions. I want to do that with their deviation. I'm going to show my scores in this case as a line because I only have one factor. And I like to do my influence plot. That is our hoteling T squared um, against the residuals so that you can look for outliers. Next, we can just check if you want to force a minimum or maximum on your different uh, plots. You can do that as well. I generally leave things at defaults. <clears throat> and then I have some options for how I might want to display things. I'm going to choose this one. So we always start from the upper left-hand corner and work to the right and then down and across again, just like we would be reading. So for the first one across the top here, what I want to put is my scores. And then I'm going to put my influence plot. And finally, I'm going to choose my predictions across the bottom. I hit next. It just takes a moment to think as it's storing these preferences. There we go. Again, we've got from here on out, the choices are pretty much the same as the no model. I'm just going to keep the defaults for everything, so I'm going to hit next all the way through. Um, again, I can do some alarms and warnings if I want to do. You can send them in emails to specific people if you want, if you have some uh, things are outside of their limits. <clears throat> I usually just want my warnings for if it's outside the full model limit. Next. And we have our summary again to check to make sure everything is how you want it. And we do finish. Now, one fun thing that we can do as well, once you have a number of models and configurations set up in here, you can actually make groups. So if I'm looking at these two that I made together, I'd like to run them at the same time. And instead of pressing start on each of them individually, I can make a group. So I can press this button, new group, and edit my name. This is going to be process false to demo group. Yes, and I'm going to choose these two process pulse two demos and finish. Let me run this one. Since I know that one works, there we go. And now we have our things that show up very nicely. Now, Nothing's happening, and that's because I don't have a spectrometer running. So I'm going to run that, and you'll see the data points show up, and you can follow them. You've got your prediction with your error bars. That's how confident we are in that particular prediction. And here on the Robin spectra, you can see what the raw spectra looks like as it goes along. We can also just change this to numeric values. So it just tells you what the concentration is as it's coming out. And that will run until you stop it. Um, you can turn off the views if you want, if you have extra things running that you don't want to see all the time. If you just click on here, they go away. You can't see them. But if I click on them again, you see they are still collecting data. Even if I close Process Pulse down entirely, when I reopen it, or someone else might even log in, and you will see 
that it is still running in the background. It will take a moment to catch up to where it was. But there we are, it is still running very nicely. If I want to stop collection, I go back to my configuration tab and hit stop. Confirm stop. And that is all. Um, there's also an audit trail, so you can click here and see everything that has been done since you've installed Process Pulse, who did it, the user ID, the level of access they have, where they connected from, and what they did. So this is very important for any FDA regulations. You can also use our data historian. And we find a configuration name, ramen demo, I believe we have version two. And let's go back. I'm gonna go pretty far just to make sure that I have some data in here. Search. And you see here are things that I collected during this time. We can see the actual results, whatever we told it to display. So our predicted, our deviations, scores, hoteling T-squared, residuals, and when they were generated. We can also look at our results chart, so that's gonna give me some graphs. Data is gonna show me my raw spectra. If I put any comments in there, they would show up. Um, sample information, if there were any warnings or alarms, they would show up here as well. And that's the brief overview for Process Pulse 2.